Today, we'll dive into the magic of grid in Deep Hunt. I'll show you how to use this amazing feature to create stunning layouts for your website. So let's get started. For this example, I'll use a div containing four items. Now, watch what happens when I apply the display grid property to this div. As you can see, my items align in a 2x2 two two formation. Grid systems can seem complex, but I'll simplify it for you with one simple animation. First, we start with a div. When we apply the display grid property to this div, it transforms into a grid structure. This grid structure consists of rows and columns. My content is placed and organized within these fields. Whenever I add new content, it's automatically positioned in the next available empty field. Now that we grasped the grid structure, let's explore the fantastic things we can achieve with it. First, we have the columns and rows options, which allow us to control the number and size of rows and columns. To adjust the number of columns, simply click here for more options. You can use the plus icon to add columns and the minus icon to reduce them. If you wish to remove a specific column, just click the X icon here. Let's put it back to two columns and let's dive into these fields. Here, you can adjust the size of your columns, with the default value being one fraction. To help you understand how fractions work, let's revisit our animation. Fraction sizes in grid property are a flexible way to divide available space into equal portions. If you change the value of one column and set it to two fractions, for example, that specific column will expand, causing the other columns to shrink and make room for it. If you're not comfortable using fractions, you can easily switch to a parameter you prefer. For example, you can set your field size to be 400 pixels. Let's return this value to one fraction and explore this option here. When you click it, your input field changes, giving you two options, one for the minimum width and the other for the maximum width. The maximum width prevents the column from expanding beyond the set value, while the minimum width ensures it doesn't shrink below a specific size. In this example, my column won't go below 200 pixels and won't go above 0.75 fractions in width. If you're not satisfied with these options, you can always go back here to this icon, click on it, and the options will be automatically reset to the default value. With the rows options, you have the same abilities as with columns. The only difference is that you control the size and number of your rows. It's important to note that you should avoid setting a specific number of rows for your grid. The grid will automatically adjust the number of rows based on the content inside and the number of columns you have. If you set, for example, three rows, you may create unused space in your grid if there aren't enough items to fill all those rows. It's time to give our items a bit of a breathing room. With the gaps option, we can do that easily. Let's create a space of 45 pixels between our columns and do the same for our rows. Now that we've taken care of that, let's move on the alignment options. You can adjust the vertical and horizontal alignment of items inside your grid. To show you how this works, I'll need to adjust the size of my items so they have different sizes. When that is done, we can go back to alignment option and start with vertical options. With flex start, your items will align to the top of the rows. With center, they will be centered. Flex end will push items to the bottom of rows. And stretch will make them stretch from bottom to top. The stretching is determined by the height of the item with the greatest height in a row. This basically means that all the items in a row will try to adapt their height to the highest item in a row. With that said, let's move on to horizontal alignment options. Start option will align your items to the left side of a column. Center option will center them. And end option will push them to the right side of a column. After covering all those grid options, let's explore the additional options available for our child items. First, we have column span and row span fields. Following that, we have align and justify, and finally, order. Let's start with align option. Using this, you can individually align a single item within your grid field vertically. Choosing flex start places the item at the top of its grid field, center option center it, Flex and push it to the bottom, and stretch stretches it from top to bottom. Now, let's explore the justify option. 
It allows you to individually align a single item within your grid field horizontally. Choosing center option will center your item inside of its grid field. Flex end will push it to the right side, stretch will stretch it from left to right, and flex start will position your item on the left side of grid field. With the order option, you can rearrange items inside your grid. Choosing last will position your item as the last in the grid, auto sets it to automatically position itself, and first will make it the first item in the grid. For more precise control, you can manually adjust item position using these three dots. To use this feature, you need to assign order numbers to your items and you can manipulate their positions. When you finish that, now you can just select item that you want to rearrange and you just need to input the wishing value in this field. If I input the number 4 here, my item will shift to the third position. Because this purple item already has the value 4, this item will be placed before it. To illustrate how column span works, let's switch to a quick animation. Imagine this is your grid, with 4 items inside and you've set the number of columns to be 10. All your content gets squeezed into these fields. Now, here's where column span comes in handy. If I set the first item's column span to 7, it automatically occupies 7 columns, pushing the other items to next available fields. Similarly, if I set the second item's column span to 3, it takes up 3 columns, and again pushing the other items to the next available fields. Now, when I go to the third and fourth items and set them to have 3 and 7 column span, they behave like the first and second items. This allows me to control the sizing of my items within my grid. Now, let's see how this works in a real example. I have a new section in front of me for this demonstration. So let's start by setting our grid to have 10 columns. You can see that all of my content gets cramped into these columns. Now, as I set the column span value of my first item to 7, in this case, my first item won't expand to 7 columns because the other items can't shrink due to the content inside them. But as soon as I set my second item to have a column span of 3, the other items will be pushed to the second row and my first and second items will occupy 7 and 3 columns. Now, if I repeat this process for the second row, you'll see that eventually all my items align just as I demonstrated in that animation. I use these numbers as an example, but you can experiment with different values until you achieve the structure that suits your needs. A row span works similarly to column span, but affect the rows instead. To show you how this works, I'll need to adjust my grid by increasing the number of rows. Let's say 3 for now. Now, if we take this item and set its row span value to 2, it will automatically expand to cover 2 grid rows. You'll notice that this rearranges the grid structure neatly, eliminating any empty space between items. Similarly, setting another item's row span value to 2 achieves the same result. We're wrapping up this video with row span option. You should have a good understanding on Dimhan's grid feature by now. If you're still a bit unsure, don't worry, practice makes perfect. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to Dimhan for more amazing tutorials.